hello guys this is a quick tip tutorial in this video we are going to break down what makes these three videos different after exporting from the forum if you care to see the final video the link will pop up now in the top right corner i have to say a special thank you to wiz on the discord server for all the help and guidance in making this uh, amazing discoveries so the setting we are going to be diving into is the fov schedule I will move to stable diffusion now and once we are in stable diffusion um, I already have my project loaded in the forum and uh, you guys can see my prompt here if you want to know how to import your project I had a tutorial on that which will be in the top right now but I'll take you guys through it quickly so first of all you just um, go to wherever your project was saved and once you are in the folder of automatic 1111 you can locate your project by going to the output folder here image to image uh, you look for that particular project and once you are in that project you just um, scroll all the way down on windows 10 you just hold shift right click and you find copy as path here you just come back to the forum um, backspace everything here and you just paste your project you load all settings and you guys can see i already have it loaded so it doesn't make too much of a difference i'll just focus on what this video is about which i mentioned earlier the fov schedule if we want to locate this tab we are going to find it under keyframes uh, we come all the way to depth wrapping and fov once we click on this uh, you guys are going to see these options here and this only works in 3d mode so if you're animating in 2d it wouldn't be available if i'm right once you're animating in 3d you have the option to use the fov schedule which we can see down here so this first zero here is your number of frames and uh, this is the value you put in but by default if you come here into this tab and this loads up you are going to find this at 70 so we have been given the description which says um it adjusts the scale at which the canvas is moved in 3d so this means we can only use this in 3d number one and also it says by the translation c which means this only also affects your translation z if you are animating and you don't have any translation z parameters or keyframes i don't think that will be useful so i'll move quickly to premiere pro now so we are going to just focus on the results we get from either taking this higher or making this lower to see exactly the results we get so from these three exported videos we are not focusing on the video images but the camera movements of these three videos which is affected by changing the fov schedule if i turn all of this off we can see from here just by putting fov schedule to 20 we can see the results we get the zooming is too intense and also it makes the whole generation so fast it distorts the prompts actually if it seems like it's not obeying the prompt and um, the camera in the z position is moving so so quickly which um was defined in um, the forum is if the value is low it's more intense which uh, we can see from the preview here visually if we turn on FOV schedule at 70, we can see a very huge difference uh, compared to both videos, which is a very good result. It's not too much distorting the generations. It's almost um, what you expect from your settings in the keyframes, if I should be right. Our third video here was set to 120. And from 120, you can see um, the zooming in is a bit flat. It's not too intense and also it's not too dramatic from opening the final video and putting it against um, 70 and 120 you guys can see the actual result which is happening the zooming in it's very flat from 120 compared to this and it's not squashed you can see here it seems like uh, from here you can see it looks a bit squashed from the sides right uh, compared to 120 um, you can always play around between moving up from 70 um, to 100 and 120 but for my final take about the FOV schedules don't leave your FOV schedule at default 
you should come in and play around with these numbers here and at the end of the day it depends on your creative direction and what you're actually working on a little testing see the results you get and decide um, what you want to go with and for me it made a very huge difference just coming across these discoveries these are not final decisions for your renders but with this awareness you can always run a few tests to see the outcomes i hope this video was helpful and once again thanks to wiz uh, from the discord server the guidance and the resources Another source you guys can learn from is this channel on the screen Which you can visit I would include a link in the description just to see a few preview test renders from which you can learn from And if you like this video and all the tips you may also look at these useful tutorials on your screen